Hi everyone, Namaste. It's me, Javindra Podwell. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this video, I'm going to explain about the concept of swell and membrane element that can be used to model the structural components such as beam, slab, shear wall, uh, or wrapped foundation, uh, as well as plate girders. So let me start with the definition of cell and membrane. Cell element. Cell element is a four node area object used to model the membrane and plate bending behavior. Yeah, this is the cell element and it has four node. So this type of element can be modeled uh, as cell or membrane element. So the cell element captures the bending stress as well as the membrane stress and it is used for simulating the floor, wall and bridge deck system and it can be homogeneous or layered throughout the thickness of this element. So let me go to the thin cell. If the thickness to length ratio of an element, this element is less than 1 by 15, 15th, then it is considered as thin cell. And the in-plane and out-of-plane Bending stiffness is considered, but the transfer transport shear deformation is not considered in case of thin shell. And the shear walls as well as slabs are modeled as thin shells in finite element software, uh, Kalitab, SAP 2000, etc. So again, let me turn into thick shell. Just opposite of thin shell, if the thickness to length ratio is greater than 1 by 15, and it is considered as thick cell. Shear deformation tends to be important for this thickness. So shear may be significant in the location where bending stress concentration of the pl uh, plate bending curvature is high or there is a huge concentration of the bending stress. So in plane and out of plane stiffness as well as the transfer shear deformation is considered in thick plate just opposite of thin plate but in thin plate in plane and out of plane stiffness only are considered so the foundation pad reactor mat column capital etc they are modeled as thick shell in e types or shap or other finite element software membrane element membrane element is an area object this area object which has no out of plane stiffness characteristics so the bending stiffness of a membrane is zero all the force that applies into the membrane uh, wall or membrane uh, slab the 100 percent ap applied force can be transferred to the adjacent beams through the membrane so the in plane stiffness can transmit the loading in its strong axis direction so this is the slab for in-plane and out-of-plane bending. Suppose if the force if the force is applied in suppose these are the axes. If the force are applied along the axis, suppose these are the force acting along this uh, axis, and these are the force applied along this axis. Suppose this is x direction, and suppose this is y direction. The force acting along its own axis is called in-plane force, and the force acting uh, along the perpendicular direction of the plane are called out of plane bending or out of plane force. So you, you, uh, for example, in this slab, this is the slab at rest condition. Suppose if the force are acting perpendicular towards the axis, the bending out of plane bending of the slab goes like this. And this is the elevation of, of out of plane bending of the slab. And similarly, if the force are acting along the direction of the plane itself, the deformation or the plate bending behavior is going like this. And 
there is no any uh, uh, bending seen in the elevation. So if we see the deformation uh, here due to bending of the structure, the deformation are along the axis of the plate or the slabs in uh, in plane bending. But if we look into the out of plane bending, the deformation as well as the rotation, they tend to occur uh, along the perpendicular direction of this plate and the plate bend or the slab bend like this. We see the elevation of the bending here, the slab bend like this as a curvature. There is always a confusion about which type of element for the slab, either cell element or the membrane element, as well as shear wall, while molding in E-types or SAP or other finite element software. We see in the figure here, in a cell element, in a cell element, six degree of freedoms are present here, or they all are open. Two degree of freedom for translation in X, Y, and Z axis, as well as the rotation in X, Y, and Z axis. It means uh, for this particular node or each individual node, this node is able to transform in all three directions as well as able to rotate in all three directions because all the nodes are open or they are not restrained against rotation and against displacement or transformation. So uh, the slab is able to rotate in all directions and able to transform in all directions. But if we look into the membrane element, three degree of freedoms are locked. Here, rotation against X direction, rotation against Y direction, and translation or transformation against Z direction, they are locked or restrained against rotation and uh, rotation along x and y direction as well as transformation in z directions. It means when the restrained third degree of freedom in this node, here in this, suppose in this node, the third degree of freedom for translation is restrained, the node is unable to deform in particular direction. It means it is unable to deform in Z direction or the stiffness at this direction is very, very large. And turning into the X and Y direction, rotation R1, R1 uh, Rx and Ry are restrained. So this particular node is not able to rotate in along the X direction and this Y direction. So it doesn't bend. Let's see the figure later. We'll see the figure in ETFs later. So when we assign a membrane to a slab element, the actual stiffness of the slab is not considered in the analysis. So it is used to transfer only only transfer the applied load in the area element or slab element to the adjacent beam like bear frame. Suppose if the bear frame structure is modeled like this, suppose these are the beams, beams and column assembly, and this is the structure. It is a, suppose it is a bear frame, and suppose this is a structure with a slab modeling it is particularly same as the load UDL load acting on the beam it means the membrane transfer the load membranes 100 percent transfer the load into the adjacent beams in its strong axis direction in another way when the slab is designed as a cell element, the stiffness of the slab is considered along with the load transfer. So the cell element is more realistic in bending uh, in the analysis. Or uh, the applied load is resisted. Some portion of the applied load in the slab is uh, resisted by the slab with the uh, flexural deformation of the slab. 
all the three degree of uh, rotation and three degree of translation, they are not locked or not restrained. So due to the flexural properties of the slab, some portion of the applied load, it can withstand and the remaining portion of the load, it can transfer to the adjacent beams. So in summary, out of plane behavior is captured in cell element and not by the membrane. So all the all these things let's continue in etabs so this is the etab model in which the columns are assigned as 300 by 300 section and beams are assigned as 230 by 350 mm and in the first figure the slab is defined as membrane element whereas in the second figure the slab is assigned as cell thin so if we go into the section properties first of all concrete is m20 and uh, reinforcement bar is fe500 so going to section properties the column section is 300 by 300 mm 300 by 300 as well as the beam is 230 by 350 mm 230 by 350 mm and the slab is defined as the cell element in second case and first is membrane so here we have the option to choose either cell thin cell thick membrane or layer so this is the membrane and finally the another one is the cell cell thin so the load of uh, 6 kN uh, as dead load and 5 kN per meter square as live load for both the case we see 6 and 5 for load and dead and live and let me run the structure here we see the deformed shape of each case in the case of membrane here in the first figure the slab is not deformed, it's remain as original condition. But if we see the second figure, the slab is deformed, the main uh, slab is deformed uh, with the beams. These are the beams, these are the beams and this is the slab, this is the deformed shape of the slab. Whereas in the case of membrane, only beams are deformed, the slab is uh, in the original state. So, if we click the animation here this is the deformed set with the animation in the case of membrane only uh, the frames are deformed but uh, in the case of uh, structure model as cell thin the cell thin slab is deformed with the beam elements so due to the flexural stiffness or flexural behavior of the slab as like the beams some portion of the load is taken by the slab and remaining portion is transferred to the beam in the case of shell element whereas in the shell element all the load which is applied to the whereas in the case of sorry membrane element all the load which has been applied in the slab they are transferred 100 percent to the beams so let me check the bending moment diagram for these two cases. First of all, let me go for plan, which is easy to view the bending moment diagram. So moment 3, 3 in the case of dead load. Here we see in the case of membrane, all the load which is applied in the slab in the form of dead is transferred to the beams and the bending moment of the beams is 29.1183 kN per meter in all the four beams but in the case of the uh, cell thin element for the slab some small portion or some portion of the applied load is absorbed or resist uh, by the slab due to its flexural behavior and the remaining portion is transferred to the beam we see the bending comparison of bending moment here in the two figure in the case of membrane and shell. So we see the moment negative moment or the hugging moment or the support is 
15.1798 in the case of cell element and same thing is 19.6875 kN in the case of membrane like uh, the uh, sagging moment as well. So from here it can be said that while modeling the uh, slab element as cell some portion of the lo load is resisted by the slab element due to its structural behavior or bending behavior of the slab. In the case of uh, low rise structure, uh, modeling slab as membrane or cell, it does not have much significant difference while uh, doing uh, either membrane or slab. But if we look into the high rise or tall building, as the Indian code IS 16700 clearly tells that in the case of tall building, the assignment of cell thin elements should be done in uh, the uh, slab uh, as cell element in the slab in order to capture the uh, say, uh, some portion of the applied load by the slab or resist by the slab so that the real behavior of the structure can be seen in the case of uh, uh, the structure of modeling with a cell element or cell thin element in the case of slab uh, rather than the membrane element so this came to a conclusion that why do beam located under the membrane area objects tend to higher moments than under the cell area objects the answer is the uh, like this the load which is applied to the membrane objects transferred directly to the supporting structural objects such as beams and columns whereas on mesh cell objects they have bending stiffness and therefore resist some portion of the load applied to the cell objects through the Flexural deformation of the slab. As a result, the less load will be available as compared to the membrane object to transfer to the beams located under a shell, while 100% of the load transferred uh, through the membrane element to the beams. Thank you.